We are rocking into the music city of Nashville, Tennessee. And we are kicking things off right out of the gate with the WWE Tag Team Championship on the line. The LWO picking up victories over the last two consecutive weeks. They have built the momentum. They have earned the number one contendership. And now they stand across the ring from A-Town down under for the Tag Team Gold. It is going to be an awesome night here in Bridgestone Arena in Nashville as coming up in your main event, a highly anticipated rematch several weeks in the making as the almighty Bobby Lashley runs it back with the apex predator Randy Orton. Randy Orton victorious in the first outing via countout. That is not satin well with Bobby Lashley and they're going to run this back later tonight. Lashley hoping for a different result. But Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde two weeks ago here on SmackDown, picking up a big time victory over Angelo Dawkins, as well as Montez Ford in the Street Profits. And then last week, alongside the Hall of Famer Rey Mysterio, the LWO pick up the six man tag team victory over Andrade, as well as the WWE Tag Team Champions, A-Town Down Under. You certainly can't deny Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde and the victories they have put together in recent weeks to become the current number one contenders. But you certainly can't deny the results that the A-Town Down team has put together over the last several months here on SmackDown. The WWE Tag Team Championship kicking things off tonight, but we also look ahead to crowning a Women's World Championship number one contender. Who will join the Women's World Championship Eliminator? We find out later tonight in an eight woman over the top rope battle royal. The winner joins EO Sky, Tegan Knox, and Roxanne Perez in a multiple week eliminator to crown Raquel Rodriguez number one contender. An eight woman over the top rope battle royal to qualify later tonight here in Bridgestone Arena. We say it week after week, every time Austin Theory and Grayson Waller make that walk down the aisle and into the squared circle. You may not love their smug, egotistical attitudes, but nobody can deny the results. The WWE Tag Team Champions retaining those titles over Alpha Academy on the first SmackDown of the season. And just a few weeks ago at Battleground, turning away Axiom and Nathan Frazier. And of course, this is a tag team championship reign that kicked off back at WrestleMania when Theory and Waller not only won the tag team championships by defeating Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio, but also crowning themselves the 2024 SmackDown Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners. Results after results, when it matters. For Austin Theory as well as the Aussie icon Grayson Waller. You gotta wonder what the confidence is for the tag team champions coming into this matchup tonight. Hot off the heels of a unsuccessful outing in the six man tag team matchup last week. The tag team title still around the waist, of course the champions, but LWO red hot here on the blue brand. Week after week as of late, do the LWO have the Aussie icon and Austin Theory's number? We are gonna find out in due time a whole lot of action to get to tonight as we are live from the Music City in Nashville, Tennessee, Bridgestone Arena for Friday Night SmackDown. And what better way to kick things off than the WWE Tag Team Championship being defended. Let's send things down to the ring for your official match introductions. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall and is for the WWE Tag Team Championship! Introducing the challengers at a combined weight of 365 pounds, Joaquin Wilde and Cruz Del Toro, the LWO! And their opponents at a combined weight of 426 pounds, the team of Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Well, here we go in Bridgestone Arena. The WWE Tag Team titles are on the line. As we mentioned a few minutes ago, 
Fury and Waller already with two successful defenses of the gold under their belt as the tag team champions. One against Alpha Academy and the other against Axiom and Nathan Frazier just two weeks ago at Battleground. But now they look towards Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro of the Latino World Order. Will they have another successful outing or is tonight the night where it all comes crashing down for a town down under? Remains to be seen in due time as Joaquin Wilde could be the aggressor out of the opening bell. Immediate tag to Cruz del Toro. I am sure the Latino World Order have gone over their game plan time and time again coming into this tag team championship match tonight. We also have to rest. Tonight is a night, I should say, to rest on their laurels. Do what brought them to the dance over the last few weeks. The high flying abilities, the gutsy performances, the resilience of Latino World Order. Tonight may not be a night to try to mix up the arsenal. Stick with what works. That's what got you here in the first place. We'll see in due time how Latino World Order approaches this tag team title matchup against a team who has been very successful at Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. I will tell you, it is worth noting that the last time these two teams met in 2v2 action, not considering last week's six-man tag, but just 2v2 as we see it tonight, was back before WrestleMania. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller defeating Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic here on SmackDown. So you gotta wonder who the confidence lies with tonight as Austin Theory buckling Cruz Del Toro in the corner. Massive powerbomb by the man from Atlanta. Of course, Selena Vega in the corner of the Latino World Order tonight. She will be back out here later for the over the top rope battle royal. Looking to qualify for the Women's World Championship Eliminator. That is then, this is now, Austin Theory. Trying to stay on the momentum. Cruz del Toro closing the gap. I'll tell you one thing about being in the ring with Theory and Waller before you start to know their arsenals. That is what Latino World Order need to realize tonight, need to remember. Remember how they survived along with the Hall of Famer Rey Mysterio just last week in San Diego on SmackDown. Now Cruz Del Toro trying to get the early advantage over Austin Theory. Del Toro with a Spanish fly. Beautifully executed as always. When is it never? Now Del Toro heading to the top. Could be going for a frog splash. Nobody home. Austin Theory now looking to take advantage of the misstep by Latino World Order's Cruz Del Toro. Going up for the frog splash. Absolute crash and burn splatting on the canvas. And now Grayson Waller looking to add insult to injury. Said it time and time again, you may not like the egotistical smug attitudes of A-Town Down Under, but nobody can deny the results when it matters. That's not to say there hasn't been a couple of bumps in the road. You look at last week's six-man tag, but when the titles have been on the line, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory have been perfectionists thus far. Will tonight be a difference maker, or will the reign for A-Town Down Under continue? Oh, man. Nothing pretty about that. Just trying to beat the hell out of Cruz del Toro. In the corner. Took too long to take advantage, however. Now del Toro trying to beat A-Town down under at their own game. A little dividing and conquering. Took his eye off the ball. The Aussie icon stacking him up for the pinfall. Almost had him that time. The WWE Tag Team Championship of Friday Night SmackDown. Hangs in the balance as we kick things off here in Bridgestone Arena. Joaquin Wilde getting a much needed tag, sending Grayson Waller into opposing territory. And that's a knockout blow any day of the week, twice on Friday. Springboard, Moonsault, to win the tag team titles. Not just yet, Grayson Waller still into it. LWO have got it done over the last two weeks. You remember the matchup against the Street Profits two weeks ago? One that went the distance. But the LWO were able to survive. Can they do it again tonight? Look at this submission hold. Locked in by one member of the Latino World Order. Grayson Waller trying to find his way out of that spider web. That's exactly what he does momentarily, but I don't think he's going to be able to capitalize. Damage done. Joaquin Wilde in firm control. 
Tonight, the biggest opportunity that the challengers may ever see in regard to the WWE Tag Team titles. Title opportunities do not come around every day. You gotta make the most of it when it is present. Grayson Waller, however, looking to play the heartbreaker for the LWO here in Nashville, Tennessee. Joaquin Wilde once again sent down to the canvas. Grayson Waller can be very physical inside of that ring, and we are seeing it firsthand. Nothing over the top, nothing pretty, but just certainly effective offense. As A-Town Down Under looks to take the Music City out of this here and looks to ground the Latino World Order. Two men who love to take it to the air. They've tried it multiple times already throughout this matchup. Some working out, some not. Baytown town down under, want to have the best advantage in this matchup. You got to beat the LWO where it counts. Now look at Zelina Vega on the apron right now. Zelina not afraid to get her hands dirty, trying to distract Austin Fury. Meanwhile, Grayson Waller just took care of Joaquin Wilde at ringside. And now Fury going after Cruz del Toro. Things are breaking down here in the Music City, but Joaquin Wilde taking advantage of an Austin Theory that had his back turned momentarily. With the ropes he goes, down he goes. Dividing and conquering the Latino world order, trying to mount some comeback in this matchup. Down goes Theory again. Joaquin Wilde could be looking for another submission hold here. The LWO looking to bring the tag team titles to Estadio Azteca, Mexico City, Mexico, on Friday night, June the 7th, for a live Super SmackDown event. Will they be able to do it? Austin Theory going to the outside. Joaquin Wilde. There is no love lost between these two teams as they are taking out the illegal competitors left and right. Business pick it up in your tag team title match. Super kick right to the jawline. Goes for the drop kick. Nobody home. Fast paced. And will it lead? to a fast finish as Austin Theory into the cover to retain the titles. But you see a desperate kick out by Joaquin Wilde. This is how you kick things off from a great city of Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, what is going to be an action-packed night on Friday Night SmackDown. The tag team titles hanging in the balance as Austin Theory looks to put away one member of the Latino World Order for good. kick out and theory in disbelief Joaquin Wilde you saw with all the enthusiasm he could muster up kick it out of that hold and that was small package to steal the tag team titles away from a town down under not just yet back and forth the momentum starts to go over the last few minutes as Joaquin Wilde and Austin Theory jock for position, trying to find pinfall opportunities to put the other away. But I don't think we are there yet. I think we're some odds way from the finish line, and Joaquin Wilde realizes that, realizes he's got to up the ante. From the top, 450 splash, and that might do it. Beautifully executed, but not a beautiful finish that the LWO was dreaming of. The Music City playing a song throughout the Bridgestone Arena in appreciation of these two tandems, leaving it all inside the squared circle for the tag team gold. Austin Theory in enemy territory. Cruz del Toro looking to send him over the top. Theory off the reversal that time. And a pump kick for his troubles. The LWO's red-hot momentum may be coming to a screeching halt. Tag made of the Aussie icon, Grayson Waller. A-Town down under looking to get some fresh legs in between the ropes. And down goes Del Toro again. LWO were hoping a tag was going to breathe some new life into this matchup. Unfortunately, A-Town down under is in firm control. Blockbuster on prettier. Grayson Waller, exciting maneuver. But Joaquin Wild not even allowed a one count there. That is the same maneuver that retained A-Town down under the gold two weeks ago at Battleground. 
Cruz Del Toro trying to get back into this. Joaquin Wild saved the day. Leaving just a glimmer of hope that Latino World Order could be leaving Nashville tonight. The new WWE Tag Team Champions. Any other day, that blockbuster on Prettier may have been the finish. But as long as Joaquin Wilde was standing on his two boots, he could not allow it. And a blockbuster, big time backbreaker of the day. Joaquin Wilde digging deep down in the bag of tricks to try to keep down the Aussie icon. Oh, excuse me, Cruz Del Toro that time. The ever exciting action in your opening contest tonight on Friday Night SmackDown. This is what Del Toro's got to do, try to stack the offense and just try to wear down one half of the tag team champions. Waller brought to his feet again. Cruz Del Toro, one maneuver after another, has to feel the tag team title slipping away from the champions. Step up! Corkscrew! Nobody does it better than Cruz Del Toro! And look at him keep the offense going on the outskirts. Down goes Grayson Waller. The LWO have got a fire underneath of them tonight. Realizing this opportunity may not rear its head again. And Del Toro is just not letting up. Beating down Grayson Waller. Now looking to take care of Austin Theory. Theory getting hung up in the top rope. Look at Del Toro allowing Waller to make his way back to the ring. Realizing he can't get the job done on the outside. Unfortunately, men have given the, given the Aussie icon way too much distance. Just that slight moment to get some R&R. &R. Now aids Grayson Waller in a comeback. And Del Toro's on spaghetti legs, and Grayson Waller looking to go behind, looking for that sleeper hold he tried to implore last week in the six-man tag team matchup in San Diego. Del Toro taps out, or worse, passes out. The titles will remain with A-Town down under. Del Toro, nice reversal. We got a pinfall here. Chad Patton running into position. Grayson Waller pops the shoulder up. And another big boot. Nasty landing for Cruz Del Toro. Into the ropes he goes. Super kick. Lands flush. Grayson Waller, much to the chagrin of the LWO, is coming alive here in Bridgestone Arena. These four men got to be running on E. How much is possibly left? Just enough to hit that stunner. Dead center of the ring. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Unfortunately, the LWO's pursuit comes crashing down. Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde giving it a fight, but Austin Theory and Grayson Waller continue to thrive under the pressure of the tag team title occasions. The gold was on the line, and they did not disappoint. The championships remain where they town down under. A great effort by the Latino World Order. But their red hot momentum over the last few weeks, that fire that they brought to tonight was put out by Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. When the lights are on bright, they have yet to miss, and they are still holding the tag team titles. With the tag team titles being a topic of discussion, I want to take you back to last month on SmackDown, this battle between Imperium along with Axiom and Nathan Frazier, tearing down the house on the blue brand to say the least. And it was really a coming out party for the two men who went on to challenge A-Town Down Under two weeks ago for the WWE tag team titles. Well, this is a loss that Imperium has not sat in well with. And Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser sat back. They saw Nathan Frazier and Axiom come up short in their pursuit of the tag team titles at Battleground. But now, these two men look to settle the score. 
Giovanni Vinci challenging Nathan Fraser to this one-on-one -on -one matchup tonight because in the closing moments of that tag team bout where Fraser and Axiom were successful, it was Nathan Fraser and him stacking the offense at ringside over Giovanni Vinci that caused the count out victory. And of course, again, that was the match that sent them on the road to battleground to challenging them for the tag team titles. Well, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci have not forgotten about the events of last month here on the blue brand. And now we have this one-on-one -on -one contest. Two-thirds of Imperium making their way down the aisle here in Bridgestone Arena, looking for a different result than their last outing. The result lies in the hands of the man on the right, Giovanni Vinci. Can he get it done? Or the fiery spark plug known as Nathan Fraser rise to the occasion yet again and bounce back from that loss at Battleground two weeks ago. It should certainly be an exciting one as SmackDown in the Music City rolls on. And his opponent from Jersey in the Channel Islands weighing in at 182 pounds, Nathan. Well, next time we come your way for a dual live premiere event, it is Saturday night, June the 15th at 5 p.m. Eastern time from Smoothie King Center in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's the 2024 King of the Ring. And of course, that tournament kicks off this coming Monday night on Raw. We're going to talk more about it later on tonight here on SmackDown. But Nathan Frazier, Somebody who has made himself welcomed on Friday Night SmackDown ever since his debut back in the fall. And this recent tandem that has came together between him and Axiom have made some waves in the tag team division. Just because they came up short two weeks ago at Battleground does not mean they are going to take that loss lying down. Fraser looking to bounce back tonight and at least looking to continue his success against Imperium in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. Fraser hot out of the gate. On Giovanni Vinci, the man who called out Frazier for this contest here tonight in Nashville. And I am sure the World Heavyweight Champion Gunther, the third member of Imperium, has got his eyes locked on this contest, hoping that Giovanni Vinci is gonna do one good for their trio tonight. We got some news on Gunther, the ring general himself, coming out of Battleground two weeks ago that we are gonna touch on just after this matchup. But right here, right now, let's take a look and whatever Nathan Frazier's got in mind, sending Gio to the outside. Nathan Frazier never been afraid to soar through the skies. And a tope suicida shot out like a cannon. Vinci sent right into the barrier. Looks like he doesn't know what hit him, as this matchup has been all Nathan Frazier since the opening bell. A great effort so far. Nathan Frazier and Axiom might have fallen short two weeks ago here on SmackDown. Or excuse me, two weeks ago at Battleground, but that does not mean their efforts are going to come to a close in the tag team division. Unable to get the victory right there against Giovanni Vinci. Looking to keep the foot on the gas pedal, however. On oh, Vinci, wait a minute! That corner exposed thanks to Ludwig Kaiser. Nathan Fraser, chest cavity first into the exposed steel. Any means necessary for Imperium to try to find their way back into this matchup. Ludwig Kaiser sticking his nose where it doesn't belong and has now awarded the momentum to Giovanni Vinci. You hate to see it. Nathan Fraser's momentum in this matchup coming to a screeching halt. And now Vinci, who is a multiple tool player inside of that ring, has taken firm control. We've talked about it numerous times. Every time Imperium is inside the squared circle, Giovanni Vinci, a multiple tool player. He's got some strength. He's got amazing agility, willing to soar through the skies if need be. He'll also take you to the mat and grapple you like nobody else. A force to be reckoned with is all members of Imperium, and Vinci trying to remind Nathan Fraser that those two men might have bit off more than they could chew, running it with Imperium just a few weeks ago. Oh no, on the shoulders, Fraser in trouble off the victory roll. I do not like Nathan Fraser's whereabouts, as Vinci, my goodness! 
extended him for an amusement park ride. Nathan Frazier loves to take things to the air, but not like that. Not by the force of his opponent. An incredible power bomb, whether you like Imperium or not. Into the cover, Nathan Frazier's destiny here tonight in Nashville was an unfortunate defeat from Imperium. Here is your winner, Giovanni Vinci. Well, it was all Frazier in the opening moments, but one exposed turnbuckle by Ludwig Kaiser allows Giovanni Vinci to take control, and Imperium stands tall here tonight on SmackDown. And speaking of Imperium, we want to take you back to two weeks ago in the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California, when the World Heavyweight Championship was on the line. The Ring General, Gunther, defended the gold against the Tribal Chief and the man who at least claimed he sat at the head of the table, although now Gunther may take that right. A war of all wars. The words do not describe the fight we saw in Sacramento two weeks ago. Never have I ever seen Guther's World Championship be in such jeopardy since he won the title back at Survivor Series last November. Roman Reigns gave this matchup all he had. A Superman punch, a spear. You saw the suplex off the announce table. These two men beat the hell out of each other, but even Roman Reigns' best was not enough to keep down Gunther, stretching his winning streak to 30 victories overall and only one defeat in the SmackDown career of the Ring General. Well, Gunther took to X earlier this week and he had this to say, when someone is worthy of my attention, I will defend my world championship again. But until then, I am taking my rightful seat on the throne of what is now my SmackDown kingdom. All hail to the Ring General, an emphatic statement by Guther, and how can you argue after the result of Battleground two weeks ago in Sacramento, California? It's time for a battle royal. The following contest is an eight-woman battle royal. Make your way to the ring. Representing the LWO from Queens, New York, Selena Vega. So already set to compete over the next several of weeks in a Women's World Championship Eliminator, Tegan Knox, Io Sky, and Roxanne Perez all have picked up victories, whether it be here on SmackDown or over on Velocity on TikTok, earning their way into the number one contender's eliminator. It'll be a series of matches between four women. The last two, or I should say the winners of two of the next matches over the next few weeks will fight each other in a number one contender's bout at Super SmackDown Friday night, June the 7th in Mexico City, Mexico. Here comes a deranged superstar looking to enter the eliminator. And from Glasgow, Scotland, Nikki Raquel Rodriguez, of course, becoming the new women's world champion two weeks ago, dethroning the queen of spades, Shayna Baszler. But now she awaits her top contender over the next several of weeks. Could be the LWO Zelina Vega, or could be this deranged Nikki Cross, who recently was drafted over to SmackDown, courtesy of Monday Night Raw. Eight women over the top rope battle royal. The winner earns the last spot in the number one contender's eliminator. Who will it be? We'll find out up next here in Nashville. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way exclusively every Wednesday to the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. A new season in the WWE is upon us, and you haven't seen anything yet. Don't miss Velocity every single Wednesday, only on TikTok.
Last week on Friday Night SmackDown, we witnessed an athletic occasion for the United States Championship as Ricochet defended the red, white, blue, and gold against the New Day's Kofi Kingston, who accepted the open challenge. This matchup could have went either way, and as you can see, they tore down the house in the Pachanga Arena in San Diego seven nights ago. Kofi Kingston came within inches of defeating Ricochet, but it's that high offense of the one and only that aided him in victory. Unfortunately, it was a short-lived celebration as Carmelo Hayes reared his head and laid out the United States champion. And that leads us to next week here on SmackDown. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods of the New Day not taking kindly to the disrespect shown by Carmelo Hayes. The Trick Mello gang, some newcomers to Friday night, and they're going to run into the New Day in 2v2 action next week here on Friday Night SmackDown. Well, we got an eight woman over the top rope battle royal on our hands. The winner joins Roxanne Perez, Tegan Knox, and EO Sky in a multi week women's world championship eliminator to crown Raquel Rodriguez number one contender. There you see one of SmackDown's newest comers, Blair Davenport, who was also drafted over courtesy of Monday Night Raw. Blair Davenport wants to be feared, and if she wins this matchup, she very well could across the rest of the SmackDown Women's Division. And here comes a woman, whether the title's on the line or not, I'm sure Raquel would love to get her hands on. Well, let's once again take you back to last week on SmackDown. Raquel Rodriguez walking down the aisle for the very first time with her brand new piece of hardware, the Women's World Championship. She was set for a non-title contest against the ballsy badass Shotzi. Turned out Shotzi had other plans. Ambushing Raquel from behind, sending her right into the ring apron and right into those diamond-plated steps. Well, the matchup getting called off as obviously Shotzi had no intentions of competing last week, only the intentions of ambushing Raquel Rodriguez. She has been obsessed with Raquel for months here on SmackDown. All the while, Raquel has been focused on Shayna Baszler and trying to obtain that Women's World Championship, which she did two weeks ago at Battleground. Shotzi's been looming in the distance. Shotzi's been upset ever since January when Raquel was chosen over her to compete inside the Elimination Chamber. And I'll bite, Shotzi probably would have taken issue with anybody who came out on top of that matchup. Just so happened to be Raquel who punched her ticket to WrestleMania on that night. The ballsy badass does not forgive, and she certainly has not forgotten. And even when Raquel has put her down between the ropes, I guess credit where credit's due, if that's the way you want to put it, Shotzi's came back for more. Well, regardless of how much Shotzi might want to destroy and dismantle Raquel Rodriguez, everybody's going to have their hands full with the returning Empress of Tomorrow. And they're from Osaka, Japan. It has been a couple of months since Asuka made her way down the aisle. And now, thanks to the WWE Draft last month, is Friday Night SmackDown property. You know, a few minutes ago, we talked about how Blair Davenport has come to SmackDown with a mission to make the entire women's division fear her on her road to winning championship gold. Well, here comes a woman entering the squared circle right now. Who doesn't need a championship to be feared? Her accolades speak for herself. Asuka has ruled over this division with an iron fist several a times. And the Empress of Tomorrow now taking her legendary career back to Friday Night SmackDown, and it could be dark times looming for the rest of the women's division. Will Asuka be joining the Women's World Championship Eliminator, or will it be Shotzi, Selena Vega, Dakota Kai, or any of the other women as this battle royal kicks off here in the Music City? Let us set the stage. We have Candice LeRae, Blair Davenport, the LWO Selena Vega, Dakota Kai, Nikki Cross, Indy Hartwell, Shotzi, and of course the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. I think we got everybody. Nonetheless, eight women competing in this battle royal. The winner will move on to take on Roxanne Perez in two weeks' time in the Women's World Championship Eliminator. 
Next week, we'll see the shiniest wizard, Tegan Knox, taking on the genius of the sky, Eo Sky. The winners of those two matches over the next two weeks will move on to Mexico City on Friday night, June the 7th, to meet in that Women's World Championship Eliminator Final to determine Raquel Rodriguez, number one contender at King of the Ring. High stakes, high reward across both the men's and women's divisions here in the WWE as we enter the summer season. And very interesting to see who's going to be the aggressor in this matchup. As Asuka and Shotzi going at it. No shortage of history between those two women. Back half of 2022 and even bleeding into 2023, Asuka and Shotzi had several matches of the WWE Women's Championship. Traded victories on numerous occasions. See if the times have changed for either of those women. And if one is more of the aggressor in this matchup opposed to the other. And I'll tell you what, as we mentioned, whether Shotzi is victorious or not tonight, you gotta believe Raquel Rodriguez itchy to get her hands on the ballsy badass who dropped her in the middle of San Diego last week. All remains to be seen who is gonna come out on top tonight in the Music City. Range Nikki Cross has got Blair Davenport. I was about to say has her up against the ropes, but she just sent her over the top rope. Blair Davenport with an unsuccessful debut here on Friday Night SmackDown. Live to fight another day as a deranged Nikki Cross trying to take some bodies in this matchup, but she may be the one on her way back to the locker room next. Wendy Hartwell trying to use her size to get Nikki Cross out of here. Unfortunately, not to be. I'm sure Raquel Rodriguez, as well as the rest of the women who are already in the Eliminator matchup, got their eyes on this contest tonight. All deserving women at that. You remember Roxanne Perez and Tegan Knox teamed up with Raquel in that six woman tag last month on SmackDown, defeating Shotzi, Zoe Stark, and Shayna Baszler. That's what qualified them for the Eliminator, that recent victory. And as for EO Sky, two weeks back on Velocity on TikTok. One-on-one -on -one with a woman who is inside the squared circle right now, the LWO Zelina Vega, and picked up a victory. All-deserving women so far competing in the Eliminator. Who is going to take that fourth spot tonight? Look at that, uncharacteristic. But a successful team up nonetheless from Indy Hartwell and Zelina Vega taking down Dakota Kai momentarily. And now Zelina turns her sights to Candice LeRae. Only one casualty so far. I'm sure it's not going to be long until we see another. Very hard to survive in this type of matchup. Wait a minute. There you go. No, Zelina Vega holds on. I could have bet the house that Indy Hartwell had just eliminated Zelina Vega there. Meanwhile, look at Indy Hartwell. Doesn't give a damn if she's usually best friends with Candice LeRae. She wants the opportunity. Indy Hartwell eliminating her best friend Candice LeRae from this battle royal. There are no friends when an opportunity hangs in the balance. Man, chaos and disorder in the middle of this battle royal so far. And you expect nothing less when a potential women's world title Andy matchup has been eliminated. is on the line. And there goes Indy Hartwell. Courtesy of Nikki Cross. We're going to get her hands dirty. Upon her arrival here on Friday Night SmackDown. Not if the Emperor's up tomorrow. Asuka's got anything to say about it. Those two got some legendary matches dating back to their time in the black and gold NXT. The Emperor's up tomorrow. Look at her remind Nikki Cross of that history. Nikki Cross has been eliminated. And there she goes. Nikki Cross gone. Down to four. Dakota Kai trying to hang in there. Shotzi and Zelina Vega, some familiar players here on SmackDown. Dakota Kai, somebody who would love to break through for a new opportunity. Asuka's accolades speak for themselves. Been a couple of months since Asuka's competed inside any squared circle, but now here on Friday Night SmackDown is already reminding not just the WWE Universe, but the superstars she is in the ring with, why she has been so successful and why she is so dangerous. Zelina Vega. We'll turn the LWO's luck around tonight. Witness firsthand her guys in Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wilde go down earlier tonight, just like Dakota Kai did. Dakota Kai going down, courtesy of the ballsy badass Shotzi, who now targets Zelina Vega. 
Just like that, we are down to three. The LWO's first lady, the ballsy badass, and the empress of tomorrow. Winner of this matchup takes on Roxanne Perez in two weeks' time. Asuka with a discus lariat, taking down the ballsy badass, whose bell has got to be rung after that. And there she goes. Shotzi has been eliminated. Shotzi's going to have to live to fight another day as Asuka takes care of her. And now the eyes locked on the LWO's first lady, who is out of the ring for good. What a victory for the Empress. Here is your winner. Asuka back here on Friday Night SmackDown and making her presence felt in short order. And now we know the four women who will compete over the next few weeks here on SmackDown to determine Raquel Rodriguez, number one contender. Who will move on to Mexico City on June the 7th? We find out next week when the shiniest wizard, Tegan Knox takes on the genius of the sky, EO Sky. Well, the next time we come your way for a dual branded live premiere event is Saturday night, June the 15th in New Orleans, Louisiana for the 2024 King of the Ring. And of course, we saw on Monday Night Raw the 16 men that will compete in the King of the Ring tournament. Baron Corbin, Braun Breaker, Dijax, LA Knight, CM Punk, Shinsuke Nakamura, Dominic Mysterio, and Jey Uso representing Raw. Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Ilya Dragunov, just some of the Friday Night SmackDown superstars. Of course, the other four are going to kick things off for the blue brand next week. El Idolo, Andrade, locks horns with Alpha Academy's master Chad Gable, what should be a master class of professional wrestling in the middle of the King of the Ring tournament. And will the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes get his head on straight? Coming out of a loss at Battleground of the Apex Predator, Randy Orton, he takes on the Cruiserweight Champion of the World, the Irish Devil, J.D. McDonough. Will it be an upset for the Irish Ace, J.D., or will the American Nightmare move on in the first round of the King of the Ring Tournament? But it is main event time from Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. The mood just changes when the Apex Predator enters. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the race from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 275 pounds, the Viper, Randy Orton. If you're asking yourself how this matchup came about, well, we're going to tell you. Just several weeks ago on SmackDown, Randy Orton one-on-one -on -one with the almighty Bobby Lashley in the main event. As you see right there, the rope getting pulled down on Lashley and the action getting taken to the outskirts of the squared circle where Randy Orton flipped the switch, became the dangerous, cold-hearted apex predator that he is, and RKO to Lashley on the floor in Desert Diamond Arena in Glendale, Arizona on that night. An RKO that awarded Randy Orton a count-out victory. Well, that has not sat in well with the almighty Bobby Lashley, to say the least. The following week, so angered at that loss, he wanted to challenge Randy Orton. Management obviously cooled down those pursuits as Randy Orton was on his way to Battleground to challenge Cody Rhodes in the steel cage match. The Celtic warrior Sheamus stepped up, fought Bobby Lashley right here in the main event, and it was a huge victory for the almighty on that night. But now two weeks removed from Randy Orton's vicious and dare I say disturbing performance at Battleground in that steel cage match against the American Nightmare, Orton now turns back to a familiar foe in the Almighty. And I'll tell you what, the world championship scene is wide open right now and both of these superstars could be looking to take that spot.
You know, Bobby Lashley's last several months on Monday Night Raw, he was so laser focused on getting a one-on-one -on -one chance to challenge for the WWE Championship that I'll bite he earned and never got due to several of situations. But now Bobby Lashley is here on Friday Night SmackDown and he looks to refocus over the last number of weeks. The loss to Randy Orton might have really been a thorn in the side, but now Lashley's got a chance to right that wrong. And as we mentioned, the world championship scene and who's going to be next in line, the challenge for the ring general, really wide open right now. Guther said, when somebody's worthy of my attention, I'll defend my world title. Well, with two juggernauts like Bobby Lashley and Randy Orton main eventing here tonight, you got to believe this is an opportunity for two future Hall of Famers to get that set attention of the man that sits atop of the SmackDown kingdom. All remains to be seen when Gunther will deem somebody worthy of challenging for the big gold belt. But here we go. A different story is on hand as the almighty Bobby Lashley takes on the apex predator Randy Orton in your SmackDown main event live from the Music City. An action-packed night tonight on the road to Super SmackDown on June the 7th and on the road to King of the Ring on June the 15th. Of course, the King of the Ring tournament, as you saw, kicks off on Monday Night Raw, and the Friday Night SmackDown side kicks off next Friday night with Andrade and Chad Gable locking horns, and Cody Rhodes, hopefully as near 100% as he can be, returns to action for the first time since Battleground as he takes on the Irish Ace, the Cruiserweight Champion, J.D. McDonough. Also coming your way next week here on SmackDown, the opening matchup in the Women's World Championship Eliminator. The genius of the sky, Io Sky, says to take on the shiniest wizard, Tegan Knotts. And what about the tag team matchup that we found out about earlier tonight? The Trick Mello gang going to have to deal with Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. What I'm sure is Carmelo Hayes' road to trying to get another opportunity at Ricochet's United States Championship. All remains to be seen what is going to happen next week, but right here, right now, Randy Orton trying to deal with his almighty problem in Bobby Lashley. He's able to survive via countout. Just a few weeks ago here on the blue brand, Randy Orton might have turned his focus to Cody Rhodes at Battleground after that, but Bobby Lashley has been focused on this matchup tonight, dealing with Randy Orton. You gotta imagine Lashley is gonna look to not put himself in the same situation as he unintentionally found himself just a few weeks ago. As you saw in the highlights, sent over the top rope and the RKO at ringside spelled the end for the almighty. If Lashley can keep this thing inside of the ring, it might be his best chance to keep down the apex predator on this occasion. Look at Randy Orton bouncing right back, corner to corner, and now Orton's popping out of the corner with a lariat to the back of the dome. Now Randy Orton's 2023, and he'll be the first to tell you, full of big time losses on big time stages. That's really what started that rivalry with the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes that we have seen play out over the last several of months. But with Randy Orton's back-to-back -back victories now over Cody Rhodes, first in the ambulance match at Backlash, and then in the steel cage match at Battleground, Orton's got to be feeling on top of the world and feeling for the first time in quite some time more dangerous than ever. With a dangerous Randy Orton, a motivated Randy Orton, and a confident Randy Orton. That does not spell well for Bobby Lashley tonight, nor does it spell well for the rest of the Friday Night SmackDown locker room. Talk about those big time losses for Randy Orton last year. A lot of those surrounding challenging for the World Heavyweight Championship during Drew McIntyre's reign with the big gold belt. As we mentioned at the top of the bell, the world title scene really wide open right now. Randy Orton could be looking to stake his claim as number one contender. Lashley in trouble and gets dropped with a vintage DDT. Orton has taken over in your Friday Night SmackDown main event and now is looking coiled and ready to strike. RKO incoming, Lashley avoids. But can Lashley counteract? He cannot. Was able to avoid the RKO, but Randy Orton not allowing Bobby Lashley to get back into this matchup. 
But you see how Bobby Lashley was ready for that RKO, did his homework, not looking for that dangerous three letters to spell disaster once again. Lashley landed on his feet that time. Wait a minute. Orton getting sent for a ride. If Bobby Lashley's got any chance to get back into this matchup, it is the power game, but it's easier said than done. Orton's hearing voices in his head, and he has been, not just for quite some time over his career, but most and certainly over the last couple of months here on SmackDown. Maybe more than ever. He's listening to him. Lashley had a chance to get back in this matchup. Did not work out. Now Randy Orton. I am sure is just trying to find another chance to strike with that RKO. Wait a minute, Lashley. Lashley creating distance. Immediately going for the kill. The Dominator on the Viper. And a close call here in the Music City, but Randy Orton gets the shoulder up. But that is what Lashley needed to do. Randy Orton in control for several minutes. And now Lashley trying to rev up the engines. The almighty not afraid to risk it all if it means victory here tonight on SmackDown. Over the top rope, down to the floor, but Lashley not wasting any time on the outside of the ring. Bobby Lashley looking to avoid putting Randy Orton in the same position that awarded him victory just a few weeks ago. Back between the ropes. Randy Orton with a nice counter. A hip throw. Down goes Lashley once more. We've got ourselves a main event clash between two future Hall of Famers. Two former world champions. And two of the faces of Friday Night SmackDown. Orton especially. Lashley just getting his feet wet on the blue brand once more over the last few weeks. But familiar with this show. The show that started it all back for the almighty. Many, many years ago, the show that he has won championship gold on was the United States champion. Right before he was drafted to Raw last year. Big time German suplex to the Viper. This is what Lashley's got to do. Use the power game. It's what he does best. Goes behind. And going for another suplex. Randy Orton is going to feel these rides he is going on. And the whiplash from him on Saturday morning. That's for damn sure. And this is where Bobby Lashley feels comfortable. This is where Bobby Lashley feels in control. And this is where he's got to stay if he wants to try to beat Randy Orton tonight. A Randy Orton who has been very on top of his game as of late. Not only the victory over Bobby Lashley, the victories over Cody Rhodes. Or it may be better than ever. But Bobby Lashley not looking to be on the receiving end of another Viper strike. STO on the outside. Orton tried to create some distance. Lashley the one closing the gap and once again bringing things back between the ropes. Got to admire the game plan of Lashley. Putting himself in positions to succeed. Unfortunately, does not succeed on the spear attempt. Side steps by Randy Orton, and down goes the Almighty. And now the Viper coiled, ready to strike. Going for the RKO. Once again, Lashley avoids it. Does not work out once, does not work out a second. Lashley back in the corner. A spear on the Apex Predator. and gets the shoulder up. We have got a barn burner on our hands. We are live in Bridgestone Arena, the Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your Friday Night SmackDown main event. Lashley and Orton beating each other from pillar to post. Orton surviving the spear, but can he get back into this matchup? There's an elbow right to the rib cage and a classic Luthez press, just trying to muscle down the strong, almighty competitor. Back into the ropes, Lashley trying to use his speed and his agility over the apex predator. Will it be enough? Throwing a couple of haymakers or addition it right back. 
Orton not afraid to break things down to a brawl. If that's where Lashley wants to meet this match. Oof. Nothing pretty about that. Orton survived the spear. Well, is that Bobby Lashley's best shot in this matchup to cut Randy Orton in half? Does Randy Orton have a second win? Another gear that he can kick into to try to survive the very game almighty tonight. Oh, no. Once again, the Viper coiled. Will he strike for the third time? It is a success. Into the RKO, into the lateral press. But Bobby Lashley, a very enthusiastic kick out with everything he's got left in the tank. You got to admire the resilience of the almighty surviving that RKO. But how much is left in the tank? Orton coming off the top. Bobby Lashley catching him in the crossbody position. Scoop and a slam. Lashley's been waiting a number of weeks for this fight. And it's not looking to see anything that Randy Orton dishes to him be his detriment. If you could survive the RKO, you may be able to make it to the finish line first. Easier said than done. Let's see who wins this race. Trying to squeeze the life out of Randy Orton. Orton desperately trying to create some distance. Both these men have thrown their best shots. It may come down to who's got enough to deal a final shot as Lashley trying to lock in the hurt lock that time. A little bit overzealous. Too close to the ropes for execution. And Orton hanging Lashley up in said ropes. Great action here in your main event as we approach a very high profile week in the WWE as the King of the Ring tournament kicks off. And now Orton taking the fight to the outside. Randy Orton could be looking for the count out victory again. The RKO didn't do it. Gonna need to do more to Bobby Lashley to keep him down. Lashley making his way back in. Not looking for the same result as a few weeks back. Misses with the big boot wildly. Orton sending him to the outside again. Lashley just doing all he can and not allow Randy Orton to bring this fight to the outskirts of the ring. Wait a minute, unless it's on Lashley's accord. Orton ragged on to the outside and a cactus elbow that Mick Foley would be proud of. That is not the kind of action that Randy Orton wanted to see on the outskirts of the squared circle. One that sees Bobby Lashley in firm control. But can Lashley capitalize here on a wounded Viper? Dead center of the ring. Lashley looking to strike. Down goes Randy Orton with a Dominator variation. And that is a huge and earned victory for the almighty Bobby Lashley waited patiently for this contest and when it came tonight he did not see the opportunity go by the wayside making the most and winning the race to the finish line here is your winner the The King of the Ring Tournament begins next week, live on Friday Night SmackDown. Thank you for joining us from the Music City in Nashville.